I'm going to bring you the most definitive guide in five steps to playing golf from nothing. Whether you are a seasoned golfer, whether you are a complete beginner, this video will have something to offer you. I hope to revolutionize beginner's golf. The first thing, number one, and you will know what it is if you are a regular to my channel, it is the golf grip. The golf grip is essential. So much so that I'm gonna show you three grips. First of all, we are gonna talk about the weak grip. This is when the left hand with the knuckles are sh not showing enough, whether the, the palm of the left hand is looking up to the sky, the palm of the right hand is looking to the floor. This will make your club face open in the backswing. This will allow you to be as weak as a kitten when it comes to hitting shots. It will make the club face fan itself open. It will cause you to have to rotate your forearms through strike. It can be done. Let me tell you people, it can, can be done, but it is pretty rancid. Then we've got the other golf grip, the super strong one, but there's one in between that. There is the neutral one, the one that the mighty Ledbetter, the mighty Faldo they inspired a generation. I was one of them. I was cart right, cart it right. Yes, that was my nickname as a golfer. Cart it right, cart right. When I used to stand there with my lovely Ledbetter grip, thumb down the middle, right hand on top, get the toe up to the sky, get the toe hang up there, get that cup in the wrist and then pacify your arms through strike. And there she goes out to the right. Beautiful, good times had by all. Straight path, a good attack angle, face open. Then you've got the cart right grip. The grip that will make you happy. It will make you feel strong. It will make the ball bend to the right. It will make you move quickly. And this, my friends, is the absolute numero uno. If you are having lessons as a new golfer, if you have had a lesson and nobody's talked about your grip, invariably, you've missed a beat. So, the right hand, we need to see this kink. We need to see the club in the base of the fingers. The pad of the left hand needs to be able to sit on top. You are able to see this crease in here. Then when you make a swing, the right hand let it sit where it likes. But that crease, that crease that's down the lifeline, that wants to sit nicely on top. Base of the fingers, middles of the fingers of the right hand, let it sit in there nicely. Then when we come to swing, then when we make some odd movements, we get away with a lot of it because that club face is going to come back pretty darn straight. So if you are not in a place where your hands on the golf club allow you to move, allow this implement to swing all over the place, you are gonna miss a beat because the face will have less chance to come back pointing in the right direction. And if you are a new golfer, if you are a seasoned golfer, if the golf ball bends off to the right, you are someone forever trying to close the club face. If you are someone that makes the ball bend to the left, you are someone that's always trying to make the club face stay as open as possible. It's getting a bit fresh and fruity out here today, folks. But the point is that if the club face is closed, if the club face is open, if you see too much bend in the sky, you will be impacted by the way those balls bend in the sky with the way you move as a golfer. So, number one, top of the pile, you must make sure you have a grip that is correct. Then, number two, balance, alignment, geometry. Let's get this club shaft at 90 degrees to your spine. Let's get that handle underneath your chest. Let's get the pressure down through the feet, 60, 40 on the heels. Get yourself balanced at a dress, folks. The old adage of receiving a ball from the goal mouth. What a load of poppycock that is. Golf tennis, uh, football's coming at you, you're trying to create force or oppose the force of the ball pushing you backwards. This golf club is trying to pull you in that direction through strike. So you better make sure that you've got some force backwards so that when you swing the golf club, you can feel like the force can oppose the pull of the golf club. This is really important. Huh, another straight one, how odd. Anyway, making sure that the setup is really good, that 90 degree rule between the spine and the club shaft. 
and we've got some nice balance down through the middles of the feet. There's that 90 degree club shaft and spine. There's the handle pushed down. Decent straight back, weight through the heels, and then make them understanding that we can move from there. There we go. Number two, good balance, 90 degrees. Number three, we now need to understand how this club shaft behaves in our golf swing. In our golf swing, as we swing the golf club back, this club head must fall the behind you of the handle. So however you do it, whether the club comes in early, whether the club goes out early, if the club halfway back, the shaft is laying down and pointing some part of the club head back behind the handle, you're gonna be in a pretty darn good spot to hit the ball with a lovely little draw. If, however, when you take this golf club back, you have the club a little bit too lined to the target. If you've got the club shaft lined to the right, what will happen is that the club head will try to open itself up on the way back down and the ball will bend away to the right. Then what you end up with is someone telling you you're coming over the top of it, you need to get more inside it and then that will open the face even more and then you'll be trying to close that club face over like a good one. So as you go back, it is very important that this club shaft lays down behind the handle. So you can then start to feel the same thing on the other side. So this club shaft must lay down, lay down, lay down, lay down. That club shaft must balance up both sides of the swing because what that's going to allow us to do is start to make the right shoulder and the left shoulder sit down on our rib cage because the external rotation of the right forearm sits the right shoulder down, mobilizes the middle of the back and allows the chest to rotate. In the same way, the left arm externally rotates, which sits down the left shoulder and allows the body to rotate through. So for all of you golfers out there that are trying to swing from the inside, from the inside, you're creating internal rotation of the left forearm, which is going to prohibit how you rotate on the other side of the golf swing. Then we start to talk about the feet, how the lower half in number four that allows us to start to rotate through the pelvis. In old money, we all talked about how we need to move off to the right. And then on the way through, we must move off to the left. And we even saw the likes of Gary Player doing this run forwards nonsense. It can work. There's golfers out there that have made millions of dollars by it. But let me tell you, if you're talented, you can make a lot work. Let's think what they could have done if they knew how to do it a little bit better. So how we rotate the lower half is that we feel force oppose the direction that the handle moves it. So as the handle swings back, as the club shaft lays down, this right foot is going to push against that direction. The handle moves to the right, the right foot pushes against that. And look how it opens up. My right hip starts to allow that chest to move even more in conjunction with that club shaft laying down. So all of a sudden with the good grip, with the right hip, with the club shaft laying down, now we start to look like we're in a pretty decent spot. And at this point, you'll start to feel a little bit more pressure on your left foot because that club shaft is laying down, that right shoulder is rotating around, that right leg is lengthening, that hip rotation is starting to come into play. And we've still got that pressure slightly biased down through the heels of the feet so that when I come through, that path line moves from the inside, that face angle is starting to behave appropriately because she's lined up in the grip. And then as we start to move through onto the other side here, we appreciate that that left leg is going to do the opposite because as we pushed the right leg straight, as we pushed the right hip back, we've moved the force onto the left leg, which as I start to move the golf club down, that left leg is going to now push back in the same way the right leg pushed on the way back, which then opens up my left hip and allows the golf club to swing around. So we've talked about the grip. We've talked about the posture. 
We've talked about how the club shaft lays down. We've talked about the footwork that allows you to move around the golf ball. Now we need to talk about these levers, how the golf club sets and unsets. The club and the arms are two levers in a system that has two hinges. One hinge, two hinge. That arm moves, that wrist sets. We want to use those two hinges to generate loads of velocity of this weighted implement down at the bottom. We don't need to worry too much about the left shoulder because that's moving around by, by virtue of taking the implement back and around and using our lower half. So what we need to make sure that you understand is that you pull from the handle, which will make the hinge load. Then we need to understand that the club head must swing down at the bottom. That club swinging down at the bottom is the energy transfer of the ecosystem that is happening through the feet and the pull of the handle that allows the shoulders to get involved to swing the club head in conjunction with the feet that allows the club head to travel at huge velocity down through strike. You don't need to keep an eye on the golf ball. The blind community of golf is a strong one. And so therefore, you don't need to worry about keep an eye on the golf ball because your head will slow you down. There's a little sixth one in there for you because however much I look at the golf ball, it's a load of old poppycock. Nobody's taking it away from me. She's still gonna be there in, in the few seconds later that I make that golf swing. So don't worry about keeping that, that head down. So the sixth and golden one, allow that head to move. So number one, we got the grip. Number two, the posture. Number three, how the forearms rotate. Number four, making sure the feet rotate the lower half. And number five, using the levers to create the speed down at the bottom of the golf ball. And if you apply those five simple rules of movement that we're all very, very good at, but if we hold the face in the wrong direction because of the grip, Number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six gets compromised. So if you are someone that has got a friend that wants to play golf, please send them this video. Because I promise you it will be the best thing that you ever do for them. If you are a seasoned golfer, drop me a comment in the box below and share with me one of those ingredients that made a difference to your game. But I promise you, this game is much, 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 much much easier than you believe it to be. And I think you'll find that, my friends, is good coaching. <laughs>